Hello everybody, I'm standing up and I never stand up in videos. Today's tutorial, welcome to day four of Premiere Week. Today's tutorial is this really cute, it's a poncho top. It's a poncho, it's a top, it's both. It's made out of, let me find it. It's made out of cotton sprout worsted multi yarns in the color saltwater taffy. This is a 100% cotton, so it breathes. I mean, aside from the holes in it, it breathes because it's cotton. Keeps you cool. Looks really nice on. This shirt is styled to be oversized. It is styled to be loose. It is poncho. It is a poncho turned top. So, it's a poncho top. Now, like I said, it is meant to be big. You may have seen this featured on my mannequin who is much smaller than I am and it looks just as cute on her as it does me but hello gorgeous you can make this as long as you want it to make it starts off working in the squ the square you start it squared you make a square going outward <clears throat> and then eventually you connect it under the arms and work in the round and because it's meant to be poncho styled there's big arm opening because it is meant to be big and loose and square. Love this top. Super, super comfortable. Beautiful colors. Really comfortable. Like loose, airy, lightweight. Really nice. The yarn is fantastic. It is a four weight cotton, but they also make the cotton sprout in a DK version and you could absolutely swap one for the other if you wanted. You just might have to adjust the numbers a little bit. But the Cotton Sprout also comes in solid color. If you don't like the stripes, you can do it all in one color. <laughs> and it comes in beautiful, beautiful colors. These are just some of the colors that we have in our stash. Whoop. So we have... The bottom row is the solids. The top row is the multis. There's more than that colorways, though. They, they definitely have more varieties than, than just that. Oh, there's also a baby pink. In case you want to be baby pink. Um, so, I should probably show you the baby pink against the peach. Because I showed you the peach. Lots of beautiful colors. Like I said, this is the saltwater taffy colorway. Very easy. This is a two row repeat. It is simple. I show you how to adjust it for your body. I show you how to adjust it for many sizes. We're actually measuring it shoulder, well not shoulder, like kind of elbow to elbow. I made mine a little bit shorter than elbow to elbow. But the measurement should, the shirt, we're going to work it in a square until it reaches your elbow creases. It's that simple. And then you connect it and work in the round. So, this will make a beautiful bathing suit cover up so that you can get straight out of the pool and go have a nice dinner <laughs> it pairs up really good with the pair of jeans that I'm having on and a tank top underneath um, it's very versatile it's a very good spring to summer to summer to fall garment especially depending on what colors you choose I mean that is a summer sunset all day long and this is like Lua. This is the color Luau, so like this is, if you have a Hawaiian vacation you want to pretend you're on, there you go. <laughs> Love this yarn. Really proud of this shirt. Stay tuned, the tutorial is coming up next. This is a really nice soft cotton that can be used for things like making a water bottle. If you want to make a matching water bottle, you got a little bit of yarn left over. This, for a size, this, because it's poncho, this is a size extra large to a 3X, possibly even a 4X. It took five balls of the cotton sprout at $4.99 each to make this size top. Um, very good value for this beautiful shirt because I would pay $60 in store for something like this. Just saying. So stay tuned for the tutorial. All right, to get started on this tutorial, I am going to say, please excuse my throat. I am trying really hard. <laughs> <laughs> to make my voice sound presentable today, but I am very froggy sounding. Um, so to start the tutorial, we are using the Cotton Sprout Worsted. You can absolutely swap out 
the the DK version of the cotton sprout there's not a huge difference in the width but if you're gonna do that you're gonna probably need to change your starting chain and it is gonna take more rows to accomplish what we're accomplishing because it is a smaller yarn uh, I'm also using a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook if it will focus um, this is one of my favorite hooks and it kind of matches the yarn so we're gonna go with it I am actually, I've already started one of these, so we're going to swap colors midway through. This is what, this we're starting off with a square, okay, we're starting off with a square, the square is going to be folded in half, and this will be the top, it is going to be gorgeous. This colorway that I am making it in is actually the saltwater taffy colorway, but for, because this was me designing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna actually I'm gonna start in a solid color so that you can see you can use any of combinations of the cotton sprout you can do you can start the first section with a solid color that matches so you start and do like this whole section here and then do the trim in a solid or you can do the whole thing in a solid if like these multi colors are not your cup of tea if you don't like a lot of colors they have beautiful colors in the cotton sprout so you can absolutely do this in a solid or if you want to get this type of look for the color but because these these colors are going to get shorter as the tutorial goes on <clears throat> so you're not going to have full stripes of color you'll have like breaks in the color if you want this type of color but you don't want the color breaks buy a couple in the solid and every couple rows or every two rows change color because this is a two row repeat so you could absolutely do two rows in pink two rows in blue two rows in the peach and just so this is aqua this is blush blush aqua peach you can do it that way as well if you so choose uh, I'm giving you guys options I like to give everybody options because I know not everybody has the same tastes that I do for the purpose of starting this tutorial, we're going to start with the peach, and then we're going to switch back to the, I personally am going to switch back to the sample we already started because it would just make my life easier. So what you're going to see through the rest of the tutorial, aside from this part right here, is going to be the saltwater taffy colorway. But this way you get an idea of what it also looks like in a solid. If I can center pull this. I have been having the worst luck center pulling lately. This yarn is 100% um, cotton and it is really, really soft. <clears throat> if you find another yarn that you find is a really soft, wearable cotton, you can substitute. Um, I'm trying to think of what is on Premier's website that would be comparison. And now we have a big old tangle, big old yarn barf, if you will. Cause this only happens when I'm doing tutorials, I swear. <laughs> Just my luck. All right, I think I'm gonna keep untangling. There we go, unraveling. All right, to get started with my 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, <clears throat> we are gonna start with a slip knot, and we are gonna start with foundation single crochet. Don't be scared if you don't know how to do this. We've done this in quite a few of our more recent tutorials. I like the foundation stitches because when I chain and then do a row of single crochets, which is what a foundation single crochet is remaking, um, I often twist my, especially when I'm working in the round, I twist the chain. And it's very frustrating to me. It also has much tighter stitches with the way I crochet. So the chain stitches will be a lot tighter than the foundation single crochet. So if you do this with me. You, If you don't want to do the foundation single crochet, you just don't understand it, you can't get it, you can go ahead and chain 80, connect in the round, and then go back around and do single crochets. But what also we need that I didn't grab is stitch markers. <clears throat> you need four stitch markers. You need four stitch markers. There's one. There's two. There's a chili pepper for three, 
And my burst stone for four. All right. Well, I don't think I'm actually going to need the fourth one, but it'll be fine. All right, so to do the foundation single crochet, you're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And in the first chain where the knot is, you're going to go in and pull up a loop. And you should have two loops on your hook. Now to create the foundation single crochet, you're going to start the stitch with a chain one. That's your chain row. And then you're going to finish it by making the single crochet stitch. So you're going to pull through both of them. Really simple. Now here's where it gets a little hairy. So if you look at the bottom of the chain stitch right here, there's three loops. Let's see how close we get. There's three loops. There's a bottom one and there's two on the top. You want to go through the two on the top. See, there should be a V on top of here. There should be a V on top of there. Let's make this light a little warmer. I feel like it's kind of on the cool side. That looks better. So you go through those two. You should have a V shape on your hook. And there should be one loop on the bottom. You pull through two chains. You're going to chain one. So you're going to chain that bottom stitch. And then you're going to pull through two, which is a single crochet. Sorry, I had to close my door. I didn't realize it was going to be so loud. And then we're going to do it again. We're going to go through those bottom two. Pull up a loop. Chain one. Single crochet. Keep all of this nice and loosey-goosey. So that way you're not fighting back into these stitches. Because right here, this is where a lot of people have problems at. Is this part right here is because it gets kind of tight. Make sure everything is nice and loose. Chain one. Single crochet. Go backwards, go into that. Make sure you get those top two loops. Pull through, chain one, single crochet. All right, now to count our stitches, we're at one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth one. So we need to stop at 20. That's five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And if you get stuck at any point and you feel like I don't know what I'm doing, just rewind this, play it slower if you need to. I think that's 15. I lost count though. Oops. 19. I'm going to have to go back through and count these because I was talking. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep. Alright, so that 20th stitch, we are going to put our stitch marker because this is going to be the corner. So. <clears throat> We're going to go here. That's going to be the corner. We marked it. We're not doing anything on this row, but the next row is going to be our corner. That way we don't have to count the next row. And then we're going to go here. See my stitch marker? I moved it. 20 stitches on the corner. We're going to mark it. 20 stitches on the corner. We're going to mark it. And so on our next row, we're going to create the corners so that this circle becomes a square. All right. So continue doing this. The foundation single crochet every 20 stitches put a stitch marker so I need 20 more
right, so we got to the next 20 stitches. If you want to make sure that your uh, stitches are even, you can just fold it in half and make sure these two lengths of yarn fold it at where the stitch marker is, should be the same length. You should have 20, and on the 20th stitch, place your stitch marker. And then we're going to do this so that we have, so this is side one, side two, we're going to create side three, and side four. So I have 40 more stitches to go, so I'm going to do 20, put a stitch marker, 20, and then we're going to connect it. So you can put a stitch marker in this first one if you so choose. It's going to be the first and the last of the row. So do 20 more foundation single crochets, put a stitch marker, 20 more, and we're going to slip stitch to join. All right, I'll meet you at the end of that. All right, we have 80 stitches, and at this point, make sure that this fits around your head very easily because this is going to be the neck hole. If by chance this is too small, go ahead and increase your number of stitches. You just want this beginning number to be a multiple of four. So if it divides by four, you're good to go. Because A, our stitch count, or our, our stitches is going to be a multiple of four, but we need the four corners, so we need it to be multiple by four. Well, a multiple of four for that reason as well. So what we're going to do is this is our, actually, it's our 20th stitch. We're going to slip stitch it to the front of the the very front part of the row, the very first stitch. And in order to do that, we need to connect the top and the bottom because if we just connect the top, there's gonna be a little gap right here. So we need to go in like we're making another foundation single crochet and pull up a loop. So you should have two loops on your hunk, okay? Then we're gonna make sure our yarn or our chain or our foundation row is not twisted. Okay, make sure it's Lay it flat on the table if you need to. And then we're going to go in that bottom stitch where the knot is. And we're going to slip stitch down here. So you're going to pull up through there and slip stitch through that first loop. You should still have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to go up through the top of the stitch and pull through all three of those. So the first section and then both. And then that's how we connect it. All right, now we are going to chain one. And in this very first part where the stitch marker is, we are going to put a corner. So we are going to do two half double crochets. One, two, chain two, and then two more half double crochets all in the same stitch. too tight and I couldn't get back through. All right. Now we're going to just half double crochet across until we get to that next stitch marker and then we're going to put another corner. So just, and I'm trying to half tail or half double crochet over the tail so I don't have to weave it in later because I like making my job easier. So in every single stitch, half double crochet across. Now you should be working on the top side of the stitch where the single crochet is, not the bottom part where we created the chain. How do you tell the difference? Okay, so the bottom part is a much tighter V-stitch and the top part should be a much looser V-stitch, although it doesn't really matter either way. But see, if you look at it on the side this way, you can see the bigger opening is on the top. Whereas a littler opener, little smaller opener is on the bottom. Just half double crochets till we get to the corner, and we're gonna do this all the way around. Half double crochet, and when you get to the stitch marker stitch, you're gonna put two half doubles, chain two, two half doubles, all in the same stitch, and that will be row one of our two row repeat. It's gonna be so simple. So simple. It looks beautiful, but it's a really simple stitch. And I try to make it a really simple stitch so that like even a beginner could make this. And it's also, I like to do simple stitches so that this can be adjusted to all sizes without having to do too much math. Because even though a lot of us are artists and crocheters, some of us are not so good at math, and I am one of them. 
All right, so we got to that stitch where, that we marked, which apparently I'm already in, which I didn't realize. All right, so we're in the 20th stitch here where the stitch marker was placed. And I'm gonna do a corner, so I'm gonna do two, double, two half double crochets, not doubles. Two half doubles, chain two, two more half doubles in that same stitch. Now, if you have a hard time with stitch recognition, you can move your stitch marker up to where the chain two is and just loop it around. And then that way when you come around for the next row, you know that that's where your corner is. And it's perfectly fine to do that. I don't really need to do that, so I'm not gonna do that because I've designed this as my, my project. I'm really good at stitch definition, so. <laughs> or stitch recognition, I should say. So just continue, half double crochet all the way around. When you get to that next stitch marker, put an increase, which is two half double, yeah, two half doubles, chain two, two half doubles in the stitch marker stitch. Move the stitch marker if you need to. If you don't, after this row, you can just get rid of the stitch markers for a little while. Just yanking more yarn out of the center so I'm not fighting it. Double crochet. And at any time, if you want, you can slow this video down by hitting the gear icon on your TV or your phone and change the speed of the video, and it will slow me down drastically like this. And I'm going to have a confession to make. I speed up videos because some people talk really slow and I can't stay with them. <laughs> All right, so we reach to the stitch marker right here. Moving it for my own purposes, but chain or not chain two half doubles in that same stitch, chain two, two more half doubles in the same stitch that creates our corner. Now, this style of shirt is a it is meant to be a baggy style, it is meant to be a um. A, it's cl it's a closed poncho. It's a closed poncho. It's taking the idea of a square poncho and turning it into a shirt. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this row, which is the half double crochet. And this is, like I said, this is a two row repeat. We're going to do this row, the half double crochet, and then the next row, which I'll show you in a moment. And you're going to repeat those two rows until, until, actually I'll show you that. Until you get to the point where, when you put this on your body, put it over your head, make sure this fits around your head very nice, smooth, easily. If you want this to be a lot bigger and off the shoulders more, you can start with 100 instead of 80 stitches, and it will be fine. It will work out. Actually, I'm going to put this stitch marker over here so I don't lose any more stitches. This keeps pulling out on me. So we're going to do the two row repeat until this part reaches... So we're going to keep going around and around and around till this part, this is your neck hole, this part reaches the crook of your elbow. So where your elbow bends, you want this part to reach that point. So we're going to keep doing that until we get to that point. But again, I'm putting the cart before the horse. We haven't even gotten to the second row of the two row repeat, but that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to continue the two row repeat until... Now if you're doing a solid color like this, and you want to change color every two rows. I'll show you how to do that too. So the first row doesn't count. So we're going to do the first, technically the first three rows before we change. If that's what you wanted. Alright, we got to the stitch marker. So we're putting an increase. Two half doubles. Chain two. Two half doubles. My dogs have been specifically barking the past couple of days around my nerves. They're doing work down the street and my dogs cannot handle it. See how we're creating that square already? We've got the two corners happening, the three corners happening. All right now we're rounding around. We're rounding the corner. Putting our last 20 half double crochets in. So each row, so we started off with each row was 20 stitches. The next row should be, because we're adding 
two half doubles in each corner on each side. So you got two here, these two, and then the chain two is the corner. And then these two, these two go with this row, these two go with that row. So if you're counting half double crochets, every row, so we should start it off with 20 on this side, the next row should be 24, the next row after that should be 28, etc. Now if your stitch count is off, it ain't going to matter. We're just going to fudge our way through it. If your stitch count is slightly off, it's not really going to matter as long as it's not like five off. If you're one or two off, it'll be fine. One is better, but like two we can play with. And I say that because when I was designing this, I kept coming up with, I would be like one stitch off. And it was irritating. And I'm like, you know what? We're just going to fudge it. We're just going to go that way because if one of you have the same problem, I'm showing you how to fix it without frogging it, without having to worry too much. Because that's the way we do on cinnamon stitches. We don't take anything in life too seriously, including crochet. Nobody's going to get down there and count that you are off a single stitch. Alright. Last stitch. And then we are going to slip stitch to, because I did a chain one and then turn. So this is a stitch and this is a stitch. So we're going to slip stitch to the top of the half double crochet. I need another drink because my throat is bothering. Right. <clears throat> and I'm going to slip stitch over to the corner, which is only one more stitch. And then slip stitch into the corner. Now this is the second row repeat. The second row of the repeat, okay? We're going to chain three. That counts as a double crochet. So this row is going to be double crochets, all right? We're going to put another double crochet next to it. So that's our increase in the corner. Two double crochets, chain three and a double crochet. Chain two. Two more double crochets in the same stitch. Oops. Oopsie, oopsie. Chain two. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches. Skip this one, skip this one. Go into the third and put a double crochet. And then in the next stitch over. Jeez, I'm sliding out over and over again. i slow down and get too excited. And in the next stitch over, put a double crochet. Chain two. Skip the next two stitches. In the third stitch, put a double crochet. In the fourth stitch, put a double crochet. Chain two. Untie this knot that we created. That wasn't there two seconds ago. All right, so chain two, skip two, two double crochet. Good gravy. Chain two, skip two, two double crochet. Okay, so that's what that should look like so far. Layer square flat. We're working along, so it's going to be double crochet, double crochet, chain two, skip two, double crochet, double crochet. Chain two, skip two, two double crochet. Now this is where, if you're gonna have uh, a count off, it's gonna be right here, right? So if you have one or two, see I have two stitches here. So we're gonna chain two, skip those two stitches and go into the corner. But if you only have one stitch there, still skip it and go into the corner. It's not gonna make a difference. Put two double crochet in the corner. Chain two. Two more double crochet in the same corner. I am removing my stitch marker because it's getting in my way. So there's our corner. Now we're going to chain two. We're just going to continue. Like even though the chain two 
skip two, two more double crochets all in the same corner. It's still, we're doing the entire row is double crochet, chain two, skip two, double crochet, chain two. We're not skipping two of the corners. Double crochet, chain, or two double crochet, chain two, and then come around the corner. We're coming back out of there. We're skipping two again. One, two, two more double crochet. Chain two, <clears throat> skip two, double crochet in each of the next two stitches, chain two, skip two, two double crochet all the way around, stop slipping out of our stitches because it's irritating myself, chain two. I might have to get a stickier hook. This one is like, this yarn is too soft. It's like slip, slip. Chain two, skip two, two double crochet. <coughs> Chain two, skip two, two double crochet. two go to the corner because we have two stitches left so we're gonna go to the corner put two double crochet chain two two double crochet sounds like something is on my front porch chain two could be a wild animal could be a predator <laughs> Skip two, because we're going around the corner, we're coming back out of the corner, we're still going to skip two, two double crochet. Chain two. In case you're worried about my porch, I frequently have the cats from across the street come over here. Skip two, two double crochets. They think they live here. I open that front door and they see the dogs and then they take off. They're over here hunting the birds. Chain two, skip two, because I have bird feeders. Alright, funny story while we're doing this double crochet, chain two, skip two. Does anybody else have bird feeders in their yard? Okay, I have a set of bird feeders. Chain two, skip two. And there is a blue, very basic bird feeder. The birds prefer it. There was a red one out there with it. They refused to go to the red one. I was like, well, maybe because it's like a squirrel proof one, like the, the thing closes off and maybe they just don't like it because they're scared of it, right? Chain two. Go into the corner. So I switched it out for another very basic bird feeder. Two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in the corner. And the birds still only go to the blue one. Chain two, skip two. No matter what I did, they still only use the one bird feeder. So I swapped the bird. One was on the right. The one was closest to the door is the one they were using. So I swapped it and I put it further away from the door. They're still only using the blue bird feeder. I don't understand it. So, I don't know, maybe I'm just going to have to leave the blue one empty for a while so they realize the other one is safe and they can eat out of it. The birds are funny. I told Mr. Cinnamon, I was like, I don't understand why they won't go to any other bird feeder but the blue one. And the blue one to me was a cheap one. It was very basic. And I didn't like it because I liked the fancy red one. It looked like a barn. I had to have it. It's squirrel proof. And the birds are like, no. So I got another one that was very similar to the very basic blue one. It's even blue in color. They just don't like it. All right, we are approaching the end of this row. Two double crochet, chain two, skip. See, and this is where we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five stitches where we should have six. So we're going to, we're going to fudge it. We're going to actually just skip one on mine. You can skip two on yours if you have the right correct number. You just want two, you want 
two spaces, two stitches between your last double crochet, chain two, and the very first one we're going to slip stitch into. So this is what I say is like I do this very frequently. This pattern is like I will mess up a stitch, and it could be that I just don't see it because I slip stitch there, or I missed a stitch. But the whole key is is that you have the same amount of either spaces on each row, or like the little section, the solid part. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're good to go. And if you fold it in half, all of your edges should match up. So you fold it this way. This to here should be the same um, length. Fold it in half the other way. Corner to corner should be the same length. Your spots should line up all the way across, which they do. So you are good to go for the next row. The next row is the row we just completed beforehand. It's just half double crochets. So I'm going to chain one because I don't chain two for half doubles. I chain one and then make the half double. We chain one and put a half double crochet where we just slip stitched. Put a half double in the next stitch. So we're in the corner still. So you should have a half double crochet, a half double crochet, and then here's the hole. Sorry, I was off camera. Half double crochet in this stitch. A half double crochet in this stitch. Now we're in the corner, so we're going to put two half double crochets. Chain two, because this is a corner. We still need to do an increase. Two more half double crochets in the corner stitch. Okay, so it should look like that. This is the row. Now, <clears throat> coming around the corner, Every time you see a double crochet, there should be two here, you are going to make sure that each one of those stitches gets a half double crochet in the top. So see, this one looks like a P, and it's you might have to slide your corner over a little bit to see the top of the P, because sometimes that can like come this far, and you're like, oh, where is the top of the stitch, and then you go to this one instead. So make sure you get both of the top of those, so you should have two, a half double on that one, half double the next one okay and then here's the space the chain two space so the chain two space needs two half double crochets in the chain two space and again make sure you pull these stitches over a little bit so you can make sure you have look at p p okay so you should put a half double here and a half double here half double half double then the chain space gets two half doubles. And then the, the P and the P, the PP if you will, those each get a half double. So each one of those tops of those double crochets gets a half double crochet. The chain space gets two half double crochets in it. And this is where the multiple of four comes in. We need the multiple of four because we have four corners we're creating. We also need the multiple of four because each set of stitches is four stitches. So one, two, three, four. That's our multiple. So there you have it. And every row should increase by four stitches all the way around because we're adding the corners Every row in the corner is going to have two extra stitches in it. So here's the two corners. Here's the two corners over here. Then the next row over here is two. There's going to be two and two here. So every row, you'll start off with 20, 24, 28, 32, etc. Unless, of course, you wanted a bigger hole. Then you go from, like if you did a chain of 100 at the beginning or a foundationless single crochet of 100, then it would go 100, 104, 108, 112, etc. for your rows. I hope that makes sense to everybody. We reached the corner, so we're putting two half double crochets. Chain two, two half double crochets. And then make sure you get both of those double crochets in the corner and put a half double in each one of those. And then do the chain space. You 
should have two half doubles. So see how we're building? The double crochet roll, row has the holes. The half double crochet adds a little bit of solidness to the bottom of the rows. <coughs> so that it's not so floppy flimsy. Um, you could also, if you wanted the space in between the rows here and here, you can switch this out to double crochet if you wanted. If you want this to be even thinner, you can do single crochet. But I like the half double crochet. I like the way it looks. It gives the effect of, it reminds me of like uh, train bridges is what it reminds me of. Like the arch train bridges, which we are so famous for here. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I'm so excited. It even looks pretty all in one color. Oh, I forgot to tell you, before you started the half double crochet row, actually no, yeah, before we started the half double crochet row, after we did the double crochet row, that's when you can change colors. <clears throat> so it would be half double, double crochet row, change color, half double, double crochet, change color, half double, double crochet row, change color. And you just keep going back and forth, or you can like do multiple colors, however you want it to look. Or you just do it all in one color. Or you can do it in the variegated color, like I'm doing, which is going to be so pretty. So we're going to continue this around, and it's just a two row repeat. Half double crochet row, increasing on the corners, and then the two double crochet, chain two, skip two row, all the way around, until keep continuing. Half double row, double crochet row, half double row, cr double crochet row. It will build like this. This is folded in half. And you're going to keep going until when you put this on your body, this part reaches the crook of your elbow. Okay, so these are going to be the sleeve openings. This is going to be the body of the shirt. It's going to continue down this way. So, I think, I don't really think I need to show you another repeat of these two rows. <clears throat> I will go ahead and switch back to the multicolored one I'm working on. And I will come back, and if, if you ever at any time get confused on what to do next, just rewind the video and watch where you put the half double crochets. So there should be half double, half double, two half doubles, half double, half double, two half doubles. In the corner, make sure you do half double in each one of these posts. And then also in the corner, put two half doubles, chain two, two half double in there. And then half double again in the two posts. Two in the hole, two in the post, etc. Go around. Next row. Since this one has the half double crochet row done, we're going to switch back over here. When you slip stitch to join, wherever you're slip stitched at this point, even after. This first section, we're not going to slip stitch to the corner anymore like we did with that last row. Wherever you connect, chain three, one, two, three, that counts as a double crochet. In the next stitch, put a double crochet. Wherever it's slip stitch, your slip stitch is going to continue going that way because we're adding stitches here. So the previous row was slip stitched here, and I can only tell because there's a color break there. Well, maybe. No. Anyway, your slip stitch is going to gradually come from the corner and it's going to move over and over and over. So wherever you connect, just put it two double crochet. It's not going to matter. Wherever you pop out at. Then you're going to chain two. You're going to skip two. Double crochet in the next two. Chain two, skip two, double, two double crochet, chain two, we're at the corner, see there's two spaces left, and then put two double crochet, 
chain two because it's a quarter. Two more double crochet in that same stitch. Chain two, rotate our project. Skip two, two double crochet. Chain two, skip two, two double crochet. The next row, we'll go back to doing the half doubles. So like I said, it's a really easy stitch. It's not hard to, to, to remember to do. Just keep alternating your rows. It's a two row repeat. It could not be simpler. Half double, double, chain two double, half doubles. Same thing, repeat, repeat, until it is wide enough for the edges to touch your elbow creases. And I will meet you back when this gets big enough and I'll give you an idea of how many rows I had to do or how many repeats I had to do to reach my body size, which is a 3X. And uh, you can make it as big or as small as you want it. You can even go a little bit bigger than that, but then it's gonna be more poncho style. It's gonna be a little bit more heavy. So that's why we're aiming for our elbow crease or just shy of our elbow crease, because this is gonna stretch out a little bit with wear. Uh, so I will meet you back at the end of however many repeats I do until I reach my elbow crease. Alright, now keep in mind, we've gotten to this point. I am making myself a size 3X. I am also, because we're measuring elbow to elbow crease, that goes by the length of your arm span, which is based off of how tall you are. So this will be different for whether you're a 3X or whether you're an extra large, this number might be the same for you because you might be taller or shorter. This is meant to be an oversized shirt. This is measured about 30 inches across, which is what my elbow to elbow measurement is. This is meant to be oversized. It's supposed to be a poncho shirt. So this is more about how tall you are than about how round you are. But if you find that you need more width on either side because maybe you're really short and you're kind of on the round side, you can go ahead and make this longer until you know that this measurement of 30 inches, which will now be doubled to 60 inches, will fit around your tummy area because this is, we're going to expand it down this way now. That's really what we're measuring for. This is meant to be oversized, like I said. This is poncho style. I measure from my elbow crease to my elbow crease, but... Like I said, if you're short and squatty, or you're short and more round or robust, and your like elbow to elbow is 25 inches, okay, and you're bigger than 50 inches around, just add a couple more rows and just go with that, okay. So what you really want is to make sure. What is my biggest measurement around my stomach? Alright, so I'm at 56 inches around my stomach, so I'm good because 30 plus 30 equals 60. So we're good to go for my size. If you're making this for a little kid, I was thinking about this a little bit ago. If you're making this for a little kid, I would probably start with a, a starting chain or a starting foundationless chain with um, probably 40 for a real small kid. Um, I think that would probably fit around most kids' heads and then just measure it out to because you can make this in any size I make sure all my patterns you can make it for little kids you can make it for big kids all right so now what we're gonna do next is I'm actually gonna try to sit down because we're, we're filming a little bit differently today we're filming differently I was standing up for that and I never film standing up all right, I'm gonna actually cut you want to make sure also your last row before you cut it is the half double crochet row you want to end it on a half double crochet row. Don't end it on the double crochet row. The reason we're cutting it is because I want to start it under the arms. Okay? And a good way to measure this is to get yourself some heavy duty stitch markers, which I don't have. I'm just going to use these. Clip the two corners here. So this is the neckline. You fold it in half. 
clip it at the two corners here and down here and try it on. Make sure your armholes are big enough and make sure that this is wide enough that it's flowy around your midsection because that's what we're aiming for. This is meant to be blousey. All right, now what we're going to do, and by the way, to this point, how length, how long is this? From the shoulder down, this is measuring about 16 inches. You could cut it now, do two rows at the bottom, you have a crop top, it'll be super cute. You could absolutely do that. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to attach in one of the corners. We're going to make a slip knot. Where's my crochet hook? I'm going to bring you guys way closer. Maybe. Come on, no. Come on, zoom, 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 zoom. All I want to do is zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. All right, I'm just going to attach the two corners together with just a slip stitch. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chain three. And under the arms here, we're going to have four double crochet. So I'm just going to put one more double crochet on this side. And you're going to have two double crochet on this side and two double crochet on this side. Okay, since we slip stitched over here, that chain three counts as a double crochet. The second counts as a double crochet. We're going to chain two. We're going to crochet over that tail. We're going to skip two and continue on with the pattern of two double crochet. Whoops. Chain two, skip two, two double crochet. The only difference with this section is under the arms, we're gonna make like a solid band. So it's gonna be a thicker section of double crochet. So we're gonna have actually four double crochets along our side. It's just gonna add a little strength and stability to the project. Oh, and as of this part, I have used three and a half skeins of this so I'm thinking seven skeins of this yarn is actually going to make a size 3x <clears throat> for a five foot eight and a half woman which would be me so two double crochet chain two skip two continue this pattern up to this point, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed working with this yarn. I have enjoyed designing this pattern. My throat is a little worse for wear because we were filming yesterday. You guys remember yesterday? <laughs> we heard that weird little noise on the porch? Yeah, that was the water department shutting off the water for the whole neighborhood in my yard. That was fantastic. We were out without water all day long yesterday. And I'm getting progressively sicker. But by the time you see this video, I will have been over this, whatever this is going on in my body. And uh, we're just doing what we can right now to continue to talk. And hopefully you can hear me because the camera's actually slightly above my head, more so than normal. Chain two, skip two, double crochet, double crochet. All right, so I'm continuing on with the pattern. Two double crochet. I noticed when I have my arms up higher, I slip out of the stitches way faster. So when I'm on the desk, I slip out a lot faster of these stitches. So I have to pull extra tight in my attention. So we are rounding the other corner, which is going to be the other part where your armpit is. Which is marked right there. Now, whereas before we were doing this pattern up at around four corners. So we're not actually going to have any corners to increase on, but we are going to put a sort of an increase on the end. It's not really an increase. 
we're just going to keep it. So every row from here down to the bottom should have the same number of stitches. It should not deviate even one stitch. So we got to the, the first corner here where we would normally go up and around. I'm going to put two double crochet there. And in the blue one, we're going to put two double crochet in that corner. That's how we're going to connect the corners. And when you pull, oh, you know, I think I messed up. Because we have to connect those like the other one is connected. Otherwise, we're going to have one hole that's bigger than the other. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put two double crochet in this first corner. And then the second corner, we're going to wrap. We're going to go in the yellow. And in the blue, we're going to pull up and we're going to put a double crochet. That's kind of where we slip stitched on the other one. And then put a second double crochet in there. So we still have the four double crochets where the two corners meet. And they actually connect in the right spot. So over here, we have a slip stitch to connect it. But then we're going to have the two double crochets on this side that slip stitched to here. So it's going to be connected. So it will be even on both sides. It will work out. So just make sure you do that extra stitch where that set that third double crochet connects the two of those together. Then come out of it with a chain two. Skip two. One, two. And then put two more double crochet. Chain two. So instead, whoop, hit the camera. So instead of going up and around the four corners, we're just going to continue in a circle. And now we're working in the round. It's just going to be a row all the way around, slip stitch to join, a row of half doubles all the way around, slip stitch to join. All right, I will meet you at the end of this row. All right, so we're approaching the end of the row. And I was crocheting just fine to put my arms up on this desk. <laughs> I swear. Right. Chain two. We're at that last corner, so we're going to put our last two double crochets in there. But because we slip stitched the top of this, we slip stitched the bottom, we slip stitched this row to join already. We don't have to do anything special on this side, and we just need to slip stitch to join up here you can remove those stitch markers now because they have zero purpose and then we're going to start and all we're just going to do the half double crochet so we're going to chain one and we're going to put a half double crochet in every stitch all the way around we'll forget two in the chain space Actually, I'm going to pull this tail up so it's crocheted in a little bit better with this stitch. So half double crochet, just like we did with all the other rows in our half double crochet row. When you see a double crochet, put a half double on top of it. When you see a chain space, put two half doubles inside that. Just go all the way around, slip stitch to join. The next row... You're going to do the double crochet row. So you're going to do four double crochets under the arms. And then you do the chain two, skip, chain two, skip two, etc. Just like we did the previous rows. The only difference is we're working in the round around the bottom now instead of around the entire square. So there's no corners. And there's going to be double of the double crochets under the corner under your arm so there should be four double crochets there it's the only difference between that row this row is exactly the same when you see a double crochet you put a half double crochet on top of it chain space two double two half double crochets you get to the armpits there's four double crochets put four half doubles all right we're going to continue these rows and we're just going to go round and around until you either run out of yarn or it's the length that you want. Now keep in mind, this is going to stretch and get longer with time. So make it a little, make like a half an inch shorter than you would normally make it because it's going to stretch down a little bit because of the weight of the fabric. You can make this a crop top. 
you can make it a shirt that just goes to your waist. You can continue it until it's past your butt if that makes you comfortable. You can make it a dress if you want. Um, I don't know how good it would look as a dress. It would look more like a muumuu at this point because it's a poncho style shirt. But I think I'm going to aim for just at like my hip. Not covering my butt, but at my hip. You could also use this as a bathing suit cover up if you want. Make it long enough that it covers to your thighs. And you can wear this over your bathing suit to the beach. And it will be absolutely beautiful. Personally, I'm going to put either a white, a black, or a pink. Although I could do any of these colors. But I have a white, a black, and a pink tank top. I might even have a baby blue tank top. Juju has a sage tank top. But I'm going to do like a form-fitting tank top underneath. Like a camisole style tank top underneath this. And I'm going to make it to the length of my hip. And of course, I will come back with the finished project. Finished product. You already know how to do this. It's the, it's the simplest thing. Just continue on with the pattern until it's the length you want or you run out of yarn. It's that easy. You can, of course, add whatever details you want to around the arms, around the neckline, around the bottom of it. You can add like thicker stitching. You can add a couple extra rows. You can add like another color. A peach if you want, like a black, a white, whatever you want. Should make it stand out a little more. Um, you can do a border around the outside of singles, doubles, half doubles, shells if you want. I mean, whatever, the, the sky's the limit. Personalize this, make it yours. Make it the length you want. Add whatever details you want to it. And as always, I want to see pictures of it when you get done. So you can post them in the Facebook group. And you'll get lots and lots of applause. You can post it on the Instagrams. And you can at sign cinnamon stitches or hashtag cinnamon stitches. You can do all those things. I just want to see it when it's done. I want to see what colors you chose. I want to see how you may have changed it up or how you made it your own. And um, I will be back when this is finished with the full measurements of how many rows we did, the length, and all that good stuff. Okay, so we finished the the top, and I wanted to come back and tell you guys how many skeins of yarn it used in total. So it used five skeins in total, and from top to bottom for a 3X, this is a 3X, top to bottom from the neckline to the bottom of the shirt, it's about 27 inches um, from the shoulder about 33 inches it is a very good length it hits me just at like the hip bones and in total from where we connected under the arms we added on 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 rows don't forget we wanted to end in the half double crochet row so in total, from top to bottom, we did, not including the, the first row, which was the first starting half double crochet, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40 rows in total equals five, five skeins of yarn. This is how it turned out. It is absolutely beautiful and I like that the arm holes are flowy because it looks like you're wearing a poncho but it also looks like you're wearing a shirt which was the whole idea of this design and um, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial I really enjoyed making it I love the way the shirt turned out I don't think I would change anything but if you're one of those people that don't like the open arm holes because it does show your side you're gonna want to wear a tank top under this or a camisole or something cute uh, if if by chance you want to do a change up and change how big the armhole is you literally Can seam it up the side If you wanted to make the armhole smaller that's one adjustment you can do just seam up the side Just do like a mattress stitch or something to close up that side But the whole idea was it for was for it to look like a poncho style shirt Totally love that. It's a little bit big on Winifred because she's a 2X and this is a 3X. 
Um, but it's also supposed to look like that. So even on the side, I think it looks good on a 2X, the same exact dimensions. Looks good on her. The whole, the flowiness, that's the whole idea of the garment. Um, so thank you so much for doing this tutorial with me. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand, well, wait a minute. No, I think this is our final, I think this is the final day of premiere week. So thank you so much for joining me on premiere week. I really hope you have enjoyed these tutorials. Um... I, I pre-record all these, so if I'm out of order and there's still another one tomorrow, just ignore what I'm saying and just keep about the business, right? <laughs> so thank you so much for making this with me, and I can't wait to see what you guys have created. Bye, guys.